wanted to film a little the last tube extra today and I thought we would do a little tutorial of the little notions pouches that I make for my project bags I'll show you an example first before we get into it so as you can see this is a project bag that I have made this is actually what I've kitted up for Sean and I's BFF start we decided to make matching project bags she's gone over this in her most recent floss tube video so I will link that below but as you can see right here this is one of the little pouches that I've made for myself and what I tend to put in these is extra thread like the full skeins of DMC for example that then I cut from to make my thread cards like this and so because Sean and I are making matching project bags I thought I was going to make Sean one of these little pouches for her to have and then get that over to her and so I thought since I was already gonna make one why don't I just film it because I have had requests in the past um, where people have asked how I make these and so I thought you know what why don't I just film it so it is very simple little pouch that we're gonna make here today I think the first time that I made it I did kind of base it on some tutorial things that I saw online but I've really adapted it for my own needs to the point where it's it's not really <laughs> based on any other tutorial now it's kind of just my own thing so I just thought I'll show you guys how I make it so before we get started I thought I would go through what all we're gonna need to make this bag so first up we're going to need a nine inch zip in a coordinating color to whatever project you're going to do so this is a light pink one and I got this off of Amazon in like a big bulk pack I've talked about them on my channel before I will link that below then you will also need your fabric <laughs> so for this you're going to need two pieces of what will become the inside fabric and two pieces of what will be the outside fabric now in my bags which you've seen what I tend to do is have the notions pouch outside match the outside of the bag so that it kind of contrasts with what the inside fabric is and then I put the inside fabric on the inside of the pouch as well just so that you get that kind of contrasting color when you're looking through the vinyl but again this is totally up to you however you want to do it and these I cut five by nine rectangles because I think that it makes kind of the size of pouch that I would like. The pouch itself will end up being just over four by eight. So we have four of these rectangles here. And then you're going to need two four by eight pieces of fusible fleece. This is the Pellon brand fusible fleece. I will link that below. I've been using it for a while now and I really like the quality. And I think it sticks, sorry, there's like fuzzes all over it. <laughs> um, I think it does a really good job at sticking properly to the fabric. And then last but not least, if you are the type of person who uses little tags on your projects, you can get one of your little tags. So I've recently bought some tags that have my channel logo on them from Ever Emblem off of Etsy. I will link them below. And so I will be putting this tag on my little pouch today because I'm giving it to Sean and so that you know it has a little signature so first thing that we're going to do is attach the two pieces of fusible fleece to what will be the outside of the bag so this is my outside fabric and what we're going to do which I will show here is essentially attach it to the wrong side so this is the wrong side and we're going to use our iron on the hot setting and glue this down so that there's about a half an inch on all sides. Okay, so I have flipped you around. So now we are facing the ironing board. And the first thing that we're going to do, let me move this all over so it's like in frame, <laughs> is iron everything. And I tend to use mine on the steam setting because I think it gets creases out better. The iron is hot, so be careful. <laughs> So I've ironed everything now and 
And now what we're going to do is attach the pieces of the fusible fleece to the outside of the bag. For my outside, and direction doesn't matter right now, so don't worry about that. These are facing different ways. <laughs> you want to attach the fusible fleece if you've never used it before. This is the Pellon brand that I am using here. And we are going to be attaching it to the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm just going to heat this up with the iron just because it helps it stick while we flip it over. And because these are five by nine and our fusible fleece pieces are four by eight, it's going to give us about a half an inch on all sides, which will, is good because it'll help us not have bulky seams later on. So I've set this down and now because it's a little warm, it's going to have started to attach. So we're going to grab it by the corners, flip it over and iron that down on the right side. And I tend to start in the middle to try to, you know, fix bubbles. Make sure you're focusing on your corners as well so that everything's stuck down really well. Again, for you more advanced sewers, this is, you know, rookie stuff. But in case you're new to this kind of thing, um, that's how you do fusible fleece. So as you can see, it is now stuck down on all sides. I'll just give it one more press on this top corner because that looked a little bit less secure and what i really like about the pellon brand is as you can see no bubbles <laughs> no bubbles because some of the first brands that i used were very bubbly and uh i really like the pellon version so now we're going to do the same thing with this one which i will just speed up two outside pieces of the bag and two ironed inside pieces of the bag. So now I'm going to flip the camera back around to my machine and we will get going. So I have had some questions in the past about the machine that I use. So this is a Brother LS14S. It is essentially a beginner machine, but I think it has some really nice features for a beginner machine. I would recommend it. And if you're wondering what this is, if you've seen this type of machine before, this is a attachment that I have gotten for my machine that uh, basically extends my sewing table. Very well worth it for a machine like this since I've been doing um, some quilting and sewing some bigger projects recently. Now, we are going to start assembling the bag. So let me move some stuff out of the way. And basically what we're gonna need to do first is attach both sides to the zipper because we are going to have a top zipper on this back and so we're basically going to make a zipper flap first with here is the zipper and these are the two flaps and then we will eventually fold it over and sew it down and that's how it'll be a pouch like this. First up we're going to make a little sandwich and this tutorial will involve bagging out just FYI so we will be doing wrong sides and then flipping things, turning them inside out to the right side. So we have our outside, which has been attached to the fusible fleece, and then we have an inside piece and the zip. So what we're gonna do is sew it to one side of the zip first, and then we'll do the outside. So first step is pinning. So for my pins, I like to use the Clover Wonder Clips. I think that they just do a really good job of everything not moving. It's very easy to remove them and put them back on and everything. So that's what I'm gonna be using in this tutorial. I will link these below if you have not used them before. And so the first step is we're going to need to put right sides together. So this is gonna be the outside and this is the inside and we are going to sandwich the zip in between them. We are going to take our zip and we want it to look like this in the end, but since this is going to get folded, we will be flipping it upside down and we want to line up the edges with the edges of this. And then we are going to sandwich it with our inside fabric right sides together. So the outside is going to be both of the wrong sides. And then I'm going to clip this in place. 
And what I tend to do with these clips in particular is I can feel the edge of where the zipper's teeth start and I kind of push the clip up to that point. All right, so we have our little sandwich here. So now we need to make sure that our machine is threaded and ready to go with the colors that we want to use. So I'm gonna get mine ready and then we'll get going. So for this project, I'm just going to be using a cream um, Gooderman thread. Uh, this is just their sew all thread. There will be top stitching later on, which I will do in a pink, but you will see that later. <laughs> all right, so I have moved the camera a bit so you can kind of see actually where I'm gonna be sewing. And I just wanted to show you that we are gonna be using a zipper foot here. Mine is just the plastic one that came with my machine. Um, but there are obviously fancier ones. And so we're all threaded, we're all bobbinated, we're ready to go. And so I'm going to start sewing here on the edge that doesn't have the zipper pull. So I'm starting on the other side because I think it's easier that way. <laughs> and so we're going to line it up and we want to get as close to the zipper teeth as possible. And now we're just going to sew a straight line all the way down. So once you get to the little end where your zipper pull is, I tend to stop my machine with the needle in the fabric. And then what you want to do is lift up the presser foot and make sure your needle is in the fabric, otherwise things will move. And then you want to unzip this zip. Pat oh, that's hard to do with the camera in. <laughs> you want to unzip the zip past where you're sewing sort of around the presser foot. And the only way you're really gonna be able to do it is if the presser foot is lifted up. And then see now, there's not gonna be a big lump here where we're trying to sew. So then now make sure you line up your edge again, everything is all sandwiched. And now you can just continue to sew right here to your end where you're gonna finish your thread. All right, so now we're gonna cut the thread. So now we have a little bit of a packet kind of that we've sewn here so we are going to flip this inside out so that we can see everything so let me move the camera again okay so now you can kind of see this a bit better so what we're going to do this bump here is from where our zipper is so we're going to flip this inside out let's zip the zipper back down so you can kind of see what we're working with and as you can see here we now have what will be the inside of the bag with the zipper upside down and then if we're imagining that this is the front of the bag our zipper because i am right-handed i like to have the zipper open from the left and the zipper once we have folded the bag will be directly on the top like that okay so now what we're going to need to do is sew this but on the other side of the zip so essentially repeat the same process but for the other side of the zip and you want to make sure at this point that when remember that we are going to unfold this you want to make sure that your fabric is going to face the right direction when it is straight up and down i don't know if you can see what i mean so see how this is directionally facing this way because this is the top of the bag you want to make sure that once this is flipped out the same will be happening on the other side of your fabric if it is a directional print like this one so because this one is a directional print i'm going to flip this here and this time we're going to face the right sides together of the outside fabric and the right sides together of the inside fabric. But rather than lining it up to where this edge is, we're going to line it up to where the edge of the zip is again. All right, so we have our little sandwich again, and now we're just gonna do the same thing and sew a straight line as close as we can get to the zipper teeth as possible.
now we have a much thicker sandwich than we had before. So let's flip this inside out as well. So as I was saying before, now we kind of have these two panels where this is the zip here in the middle. I'll zip it all down so you can kind of see what we're working with. And on from this side, this is the two insides. And then when we fold it this way, we get an idea of how the pouch is going to look when it is finished. So I don't know if you can tell by the way that the camera is inverting the footage, but um, the fabric is facing the right way up on both sides. <laughs> so now that we have our like open book flap sort of thing, we are going to start constructing what will be the inside of the bag and the outside of the bag. And essentially these pouches are going to get sewn together. So from where we've folded it flat side out, now we are going to fold it to where these two inside flaps are together and these two outside flaps are together. So it's kind of looking like this and then you have the seam where the zipper is kind of facing up and you should still have right sides together right sides together. So now the next step is essentially going to be to sew the bottom of both sides of these, which from this angle looks like the right side here and the left side here, to make kind of two separate pouch sandwiches within this bag that will eventually be bagged out. So let's start with what is the outside of the bag. So we need to line up our corners and pin again or clip in this particular case. And I like to clip basically to the line of the fusible fleece. So we have our clips, including the one that is upside down. <laughs> I just noticed that, <laughs> lol. Okay, so now what we are going to do is sew a straight line all the way down here and we're gonna keep using the zipper foot because we want it to be as close to the line of the fusible fleece as possible because we're going for a half inch seam allowance here. And the zipper foot does a really good job with that because if I pull this down, you can kind of see the edge of the zipper foot can go right over the edge of where that fusible fleece is and you can still be sewing as close right to the edge as possible. So just go ahead and sew right along this line. As you can see there's kind of a, a pouch here and we've sewed to the edge right here along this edge all the way across and now the inside is going to be slightly different so rather than sewing all the way from edge to edge on this one we need to leave a gap right here in the middle for us to be able to stick our hand inside and turn the back out so what I'm going to do is put a little clip right here in what sort of the middle is. And then what we're going to want to do is stop a little bit before it and a little bit after it, or well, start stitching again a bit after it so that it's big enough that I can put my hand in it. So we will start from this top edge. You can switch foots uh, if you would like to your regular you know straight stitch foot which i shall do here and again we're going for a half inch seam allowance and once i've got to the point where i am going to stop and leave this gap i do do one or two back stitches just to finish the thread so that the whole pouch doesn't unravel later when we do the top stitching down, but you also don't have to do that. I mean, it, it's up to you. And now I'm just gonna scoot us down to a little bit past this part and then just sew to the end. I'm going 
gonna move out our little middle marker here. So as you can see, we have a line that goes to here and then our gap for my hand and then the line here. All right, so now we have sort of our flap within the big zipper seam situation in the middle there. So now what we are going to do is reach in here to where the zip is and we're gonna unzip it to about halfway across the bag. So you can't really tell because, <laughs> but it is, it is unzipped to about halfway. So essentially what that's gonna let us do is when we reach in through here, we're gonna grab through the, the hole where the zip is. So once we've done that, what we're going to do is work, sew down the sides. So how this is going to work is we are going to take from here where the zipper is and we are going to fold this part over so that the two edges of the two separately sewn together pouches are meeting up. And we are going to clip that. So now we have on the one side the inside and on the other side we have the outside. And now what we are going to do is sew along these edges to close up the bag. Now you want to make sure that you have unzipped the zip to halfway at this point. Otherwise you are not going to be able to open the bag after we do this. <laughs> so um, make sure that you've done that. And now what we are going to do is using our same half inch seam allowance. And this time I will switch back to my zipper foot just so that it's easier. You can line yourself up again with the edges of the fusible fleece. And we just wanna sew straight down this side and then straight down the other side. So now we have this all pieced together flat. So the next step is to bag this out, check to make sure that we've got all of our corners sewn in correctly. We are going to reach here into the little hole that we made. You're gonna reach up and grab the edge of the zip that you opened and you're gonna start pulling it through. So as you can see, I have reached up here and I have grabbed the edge of this zip and I'm gonna pull this out of this hole. And when I get to this stage, I find it's easy to just reach here and unzip it the rest of the way, it kinda of helps it fold out better. And would you look at that? We have the beginnings of a pouch, people. So now what I like to do is to just push out my corners here to check and make sure i mean not a full you know corner pushing but just enough to make sure that everything looks sewn down all right and everything looks pretty good obviously again i haven't pushed this out all the way because the corners are still really bulky um at the minute but as you can see we don't have any holes and everything so now we can go and take some of the bulk out of these seams so we're gonna unfortunately flip it back inside out. <laughs> so to do that, then you're just gonna go back through the hole and pull it back inside out and leave it unzipped all the way. So now it's gonna get to this kind of stage and you're just gonna want to fold it back to being flat. So as you can see, because we've done half inch seam allowance and everything, everything is a bit bulky. And so what we wanna do certainly is um, even up any edges if it looks like you know things got a bit wonky in your sewing. Um, obviously this fabric is fraying quite a bit as you can see. So good thing I'm about to finish this bag. But we definitely want to take the bulk out of the corners because that will help ensure that 
we can press out the corners really nicely. So I have my, my dressmaking scissors here. You could use smaller snips though if you wanted. First off, I'm gonna cut all this thread because it's like in my way. Okay, so this, you need to be very careful when you do this from personal experience and also from watching Elizabeth Ann's project bag tutorials. I know that you want to make sure that you don't cut through this part of this seam right here because what you're gonna do is make a hole in the corner. So when we take the bulk out of this corner, we want to kind of avoid cutting this far in to this seam. So what I do is I snip this part. So we have a little triangle here. I'm gonna do that on all sides. And I'm also gonna snip off the edges of the zip because we don't need to have those anymore. Okay, so now we've kind of rounded these corners a bit, but what we also wanna do is take some of the bulk out approaching the corners. So again, it's okay to cut this part of the seam. It's not, you don't wanna to cut too close to this part or you will get a hole. So what I do is I kinda of go from about here and just sorta of angle that a little bit. So it's taken some of the bulk in that seam out. And I'll show you again. So as you can see, it's just taking some of it out. And if you wanted to, you could also just trim the whole seam down a little bit. This isn't, you know, this isn't precise. This is just to make it so that it's all gonna unfold very easily for us here. And so just repeat that on all of your corners. All right, so once you've done that, your corners should kind of look like this, where it's sort of angled into the corner. Again, making sure that you haven't cut anything too close here. And now what we're going to do is flip it back right side out to make sure that we didn't accidentally cut through something and create a hole. All right, so we've got it back inside out. And as you can see, it's a, it's a lot closer to being a right angle at the corners than it was before. I know some people use a crochet hook for this. You could also use this end of your seam ripper if you wanted to or whatever. But you can just kind of fit that up into the corner and kind of try to push out the edge. Definitely do not use this part or you, we will be in trouble. But <laughs> to just kind of push out those corners even more if you wanted to. So once you have them kind of to your liking, we can now sew up this hole that's in the bottom of the inside. Now there's two ways to do this. You could either reach in here and do some, uh, do like an invisible, you know, mattress stitch by hand or something like that. Or if you don't really care because it's the inside of a little pouch, you can just do a neat little top stitch on top of it, which is what I tend to do and what I'm gonna do for this particular bag. So what I'm going to do is change my thread to be a light pink because I want it to match this. And then I will show you how I'm gonna do that. All right, so I have changed to the light pink thread and I have also switched back to my regular plain old machine foot. And now what we're gonna wanna do is kind of pull this inside of the bag out because you want to make sure you're not sewing through all of this back here. So just make sure you've got all of the inside pulled out. And here where we have the hole, you're going to want to basically make a little rolled uh, hem sort of. So we're going to fold or a fold over anyway. We're going to fold this part and we're going to have this part folded and then kind of press these together. And I'll put a little clip there just so you can see. And as you can see up here is where our stitches stopped on this side of the hole and same as over here. So what I'm going to do is sew as close as I can to this little edge, probably an eighth of an inch seam allowance maybe, and just go from this edge here to this edge here and just top stitch it down to kind of sew up that hole. After 
you've trimmed down your thread. As you can see, there's just this tiny little top stitch seam here from when we sewed this together. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's just on the inside of the bag. And so now we can finally fold it all the way out and we have a little zippered notions pouch. So I'm gonna take you back to the ironing board for just a second so that we can finish this off. All right, so we are back at the ironing board with our finished pouch. As you can see, here's our beautiful little inside and our beautiful outside and our top zip. So from turning this all inside out multiple times, as you can see, it's kind of made the top wrinkly. So what I like to do is just give it a final little press with my iron to just even all those little wrinkles out. Because this is a gift, I'm going to add one of my little tags here in this bottom right hand corner. So I've just done my YouTube and Instagram logo for this and it comes with a backing to prevent fraying. So what I want to do is pull this off and these are iron on. So this is the heavy iron on version that they have, which is a 15 second iron. And I'm going to just place this here in this bottom corner. I think that looks cute. Oh, complete opposite side of the screen from you there. <laughs> I think that looks cute. And now we're just going to take our iron and hold it down for 15 seconds. There you have it. We have made a little zipper notions pouch that matches our project bag. We can keep it inside, keep any threads, scissors, anything you want to have in there. And that's how I do these. So I hope you all have liked this tutorial. You thought it was easy to follow. I hope it was. I hope the camera's not too bad. We'll see when I'm editing the footage later. <laughs> and yeah, if you like seeing this kind of little tutorial on my channel, let me know if you'd like me to do more in the future. I am enjoying kind of exploring different little content to have here on my channel as floss tube extras. I will have a new full floss tube update coming soon. I'm thinking mid-year with Parade, so get excited and yeah if you liked what you see and you want to see more from my channel I do have a playlist for my floss tube extras as well as a playlist for my regular floss tube updates so you can find those right there on my channel if you like what you see please give it a like comment down below anything you want to comment down below if you think you're gonna to want to make one of these anything else that you like to have as little extras to go along with your project bags whether or not you make them yourself and please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. That's Evelyn Across the Pond. You can also follow me over on Instagram at Evelyn Across the Pond where I post little updates on my progress with my sewing and quilting and knitting and stitching and everything that I do. And yeah, I will see y'all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.